Genesis chapter number 13. And uh, we will read verse number 14 and 15. Now, if you have a neighbor who has a Bible and they're still searching for the book of Genesis, please lay your feet upon their head. So you could pump some sense in their head. Genesis is not after the book of Matthew. Hallelujah. Genesis, I, I don't care if you pray and fast for eight days dry, you'll never find Genesis in the New Testament. It shall not relocate just because you did a 40 day fast. You'll kill yourself for nothing. Hallelujah. Genesis 13, verse number 14 and 15. Mm hmm. And when you have it, say, Amen. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lord was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from uh, the place where thou art, and northward and southward and eastward and westward. For everybody, verse number 15. And we shall go to the book of Joshua, chapter number one. Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter number one. We will read verse number one through verse number five. And when you have it, say amen. Joshua 1, hallelujah. From verse number 1 through 5. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I give unto them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now we're going to read down to verse number five, but uh, just for uh, um, clarification's sake, I want us to read verse number three again, everybody. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, uh, shall be your coast. Now, verse number five, everybody. Mm. Come on, read verse number five again one more time. Now, you know, that just cuts it for me right there. He said, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I don't care if you bring the mightiest of the witches. I don't care if you gather all Salem, Massachusetts together. And I don't care if you bring Maggi, Moto, and all his companies. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord say, There shall not any man be able. I want you to look at somebody and tell him, No man shall be able to stand before you. Because God is with you. Somebody shout amen. I'm going to be discussing from the subject, regaining spiritual territories. Somebody said regaining spiritual territories. 
Father, we bless your name. We give you praise, glory, uh, honor, and majesty. We ascribe it all unto your name. You are God all by yourself. Beside you, there is no other. For there is no other power but you. There is no authority but thine. Great and awesome God you are, living and dwelling in eternity, whose name is holy, powerful, magnificent, omnipotent God, thou art. We come before you in the matchless name of your only begotten son Jesus Christ we have come in this place to worship you my God to lift up your name to have fellowship with the spirit of the living God also to sit down at the master's feet the feet of Jesus Christ and I'll hearken unto these precious words of life which are flowing down from the bosom of the majesty on high I pray that you speak unto the lives of we your people release a rumor word that shall transform somebody catapulting them into the next dimension and level of God for their lives my God I decrease that you may increase let these lips of clay Lord I pray be supernaturally endowed with powerful supernatural revelations of your word use me as a vessel ready for the master's use that I shall be a vessel a clean that is ready to pour out pure water from the presence of the living God we position our hearts our spirit man we gather our minds together from every place they had been scattered to uh, some people came from diverse places from their jobs and workplaces and and families and uh, uh, some agendas that have disturbed their hearts but right now I am praying for the spirit of reconciliation the ministry of reconciliation you gave unto us in your word that you reconcile our hearts back unto you that they be all tuned in unto one God one faith one father of all creation with one exclusive reason to magnify your name I pray that this day we shall leave this place with a seed of this word planted on good ground and it shall bear forth fruit thirty fold sixty fold and a hundred fold we give you praise glory and honor in Jesus mighty name somebody shout amen, amen. and you may take your seats in the presence of the living God we have heard from the discussions of the Word of God, a scripture that has been common to many of us that maybe or probably many of us have heard over and over again. Some of us have been in salvation for years, even decades. Uh, I know there's nobody here who has been in salvation for a century. Hallelujah. Uh, and if you capture the revelation, a century uh, is actually... A hundred years, amen. So I believe there is nobody of us who has been in salvation for over a century or for over a hundred years. Somebody say amen. But uh, we look in scripture, Joshua happens to write the book of Joshua, which in other uh, theological contexts, it is written as the book of Jeshua if you will, but uh, it is all the same thing, it is all the same uh, writings, it is all the same inscriptions and from the same original manuscripts that were intended for the edification of the body of Christ. We have to understand why the word was uh, written. Yet this man of God, that the writers of the book of Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews having been written by several Hebrew scholars, Paul just being one of them, but yet several many others. In chapter number 11, they happen to speak about the patriarchs of faith these men who are able to lay down the foundation of Christianity the foundation of what we are even living upon uh, for example the book of Exodus was because Moses received a mantle and God called Moses spoke unto him on the mountain Sinai said unto him go tell Pharaoh to let my people go that means had Moses not travailed and prevailed through prayer probably there would be not writing of the book of Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. Looks like the anointing God put upon one man was able actually to bring five books into manifestation because even the book of Genesis was not there until Moses, uh, by way of the Spirit of God, the Bible says uh, the Bible was written by holy men of God as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So Moses wrote the Pentateuch, which is a description of the first five books of the Old Testament but uh, one thing I want you to understand Moses is able to live 
uh, through such uh, a tremendous uh, time and left behind an enduring legacy that one man that God met with and placed his anointing over his life, this man was able to transform generations that even now our Christianity is still even tracing back to the days of Moses. That's why Jesus says also that I did not come to destroy the law, which is Moses or the prophets, because the Bible is composed of four sections as we discussed last week, uh, two major sections and four major subsections. The two major sections happening uh, to be the Old and the New Testament, and then the subsections making a total of four happening to be the law, the prophets, the gospels and the epistles the epistles are the other 23 books which were written after the book of uh matthew mark luke and john uh 14 of which were written by paul i'm going into the discussions of scriptures now hallelujah but i, I pray that you shall have uh, a vast um understanding of the word of god but uh, something i'm trying to understand here is these patriarchs have laid a foundation yet they themselves had no bible to live upon they had no scripture to read but they were able to live through faith they were able by the faith they had and the faith God had bestowed in their spirit man these men were powerful and they were able to live through diverse tribulations and uh, contentious circumstances and they were able to prevail if you may look back what book of the Bible did Abraham read if you may look back, what book of the Bible did Isaac and Jacob read? What book of the Bible did actually even Moses read? What book of the Bible did other servants of God read? They had nothing else to read on. But the Bible says, by faith we believe, according to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And the things which are, uh, were made into manifestation by the things which are not seen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse number 1 begins out and says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a God report. Hallelujah. The Bible goes on to say that in verse number 3, that by faith, hallelujah, we believe that the worlds were framed by the word of the living God. That the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hallelujah. That means this man of God, if you read all and go down the list of the book of Hebrews, you'll see they begin to mention out their names and they mention Abraham, they mention Jacob, they mention Joseph he goes into a wilderness experience, sold into uh, captivity by his own brethren left in a ditch wherein there was no water to die, then sold into captivity for 11 years and another 2 years he is in prison, he had no Bible to read our faith is standing on the pillar of the word of God. We have a Bible. Some of us have more than 10 Bibles. Trust me. Some of us got Bibles all then on your move. When you go to work, you got a Bible on your smartphone or on your gadget or your tablet. If you will. But these guys had nothing to depend upon but the fact that they believed there is a God somehow, somewhere. How did I get into existence? How can a man like, uh, like Abraham, no wonder the Bible defines him as the father of faith, that he was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness because he believed on the name of the living God. The Lord never appeared unto Abraham by a vision. The Lord never appeared unto Abraham by a dream. Simply God spoke unto Abraham by a clear cut, smooth, a small voice, still small voice. And Abraham heard that uh, I am almighty God. Now leave the land of your father and your mother leave your kindred uh genesis 12 verse number one uh through verse number three we see god speaking unto him but god never showed himself unto abraham and this guy has been a moon worshiper he has a history whereby his daddy used to worship the moon was a moon worshiper and an idol leader but the man chooses to leave his father's household his kindred his land his people his country to go to a land and God has given him no address. Which one of you will depart from this place to go to a land that God has given you no address? 
you even have the Bible, at least we know God appeared unto Moses. We know God appeared unto Joshua. We know the angel of the Lord came and began to wrestle with Jacob. And sometimes when things uh, get so, so, uh, so weird with me and I get frustrated, I go back in scriptures. I strengthen myself in the word of God. Just to remember that if God did it for Elisha, God can do it for me as well. The disciples walked with Jesus three years and a half. Yet one of them remained uh, yeah, 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 a betrayer and a thief in the manifest presence of God Almighty. These guys had no excuse. I'm laying a foundation for you and I to understand. Somebody say amen. That when you look in scripture, these men have been able to live through a very difficult course of time in a history where there was nothing to depend upon, nothing to lean on, nothing to lean against, nothing to, nobody to run to, but simply because they believed on the name of the living God. No wonder Hebrews 11 verse number 6, I believe the Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please God, whosoever cometh unto God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you choose to come to the name of the living God, it is a big sin for you to doubt the power of God. It is a big sin for you to doubt the omnipotence of God that he is able to do it, let alone even believing that he is there. You have to believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Number one, he said, without faith it is impossible to believe uh, to, uh, to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he, he that he is. I believe if I were to ask a question randomly in the church, how many of us have seen the manifested presence of Jesus? Literally, I would see maybe three or four hands raised in the house, yet we have a whole lot more people in the sanctuary. But yet here you are in the house of God, walking by faith, believing on the name of the living God, having a Bible that you read on every day, uh, coming to worship God, a God you have never seen. I call that faith. Tell somebody, I got faith. Come on, tell somebody, I got faith. Yeah, I think that is faith enough to believe. For me even to come into the sanctuary, not to go, not to live a man that I see for a man that I don't see. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. To live a man who can give you, ah, uh, ah, uh, Lord have mercy. Who can, ah, uh, oh God, I wish I could preach it the way I feel it. Let the church say amen. To live a man whose shoulder you can lean on, whose shoulder you can cry on, to live a man who can comfort you in the bed, to live a man who can maybe pay a portion of your bill for a man you have never seen and don't even know you would ever see. It takes a whole lot of faith. For you to say, uh, honey, I love you, but uh, I feel there is a call of God in me. And I got to live uh, holy and uh, righteously for God. For without a holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It takes a great deal of faith for you uh, to say no unto a man. Yet you know, you're so broke, you're so busted, and so disgusted with your disgusted self. And a man can give you everything you ever had need of, but you leave that man you see for the man you don't see. Let the church say amen. I call that faith. The reason you're not in a shrine worshipping devils and having demons I do their counterfeit miracles but you choose to wait on the name of the living God it is because you have faith. Isaiah 40 verse number 31 the Bible says but they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as the eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint. Number one God is going to renew your faith. 
God is going to renew your strength. Sometimes you feel like giving up and you feel like throwing in a white towel because uh, the people are forsaken you, turned their backs on you. People you hope to help you. People you hope to uh, be a shoulder to cry on and uh, maybe a wall to lean against have disappointed you. But God said, I'm going to be with you. If you can just wait on me. Uh, tell somebody, wait on the Lord. That's why David said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. It's amazing how this man begins to write uh, uh, maybe a half the book of Psalms because some of y'all thought the whole book of Psalms was written uh, by David. No, no, no. Actually, maybe about a half or three quarters of the book of Psalms was written by David. David was a psalmist, was a priest, was a prophet. He was a musician. He was a king unto God Almighty. But he happened to write maybe three quarters of the book of Psalms. Some of them were written by Solomon. Some of them were written by actually Moses. Some of them were written by the sons of Korah. Some of them are, are, are coming from diverse means and some of you all didn't know that. But David goes on to write several things. If you notice in the writings of David, he encourages himself. Times are when people have forsaken David. No wonder he writes in Psalm 27, verse number 10. Though my father and my mother may forsake me, then the Lord, whom I have never seen, then God, who has kept me. Because you know when you are in the wilderness of rejection and poverty, sickness and disease, you never preserve yourself. You know a lion came to attack you. You know a bear came to attack you. How did you receive supernatural strength to slay a bear? Some of you are giant killers and beast slayers. And the reason you're slaying beasts like the beast of celibacy and you've refused to sleep around is because you believe in the name of the living God that one way or another he shall come through for you. Tell somebody, I'm still holding on to the name of the living God. Come on, tell somebody, I'm still waiting on the Lord. I'm, I'm still waiting on the Lord. Yeah, all may go. Everything may go away. I may lose it all, but uh, yeah, I still, as long as I still have the name of the living God, they that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abideth forever. Yeah, because of chosen and to trust in the name of the living God. Great peace of they that oh God have mercy that trust in the Lord. Great peace of they you shall keep him in path of peace whose mind is stayed on you because it trusts in you. Somebody shout amen. Abraham has no foundation of his faith except the fact that God has spoken unto him in Genesis 12. Verse number one. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, He had spoken unto Abraham, Leave the land of your fathers, leave your father's household, your kindred and your country, and go to a land which I will show unto you. He simply heard a voice, my God. If just now, let me give an example. If you are to hear a voice, quit your job elder katumba would you do that you begin thinking about your mortgage and about madrin and about gloria and about your quiet hallelujah Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what it means to depend completely on God. That I have nothing else to lean on. But I'm completely trusting in the name of the living God. We haven't seen the power of God. Pastor Bella on Friday said, the last Sunday in the course of praise and worship, the Lord descended down. Literally, there was such a glow in the atmosphere. There's such a, such a, so such a fragrance, such an aroma in the whole house that, that really the praise of God come down and we were all ruptured into the presence of God and God began to speak unto the woman of God. You people are despising me. You don't know how big I am. You're depending on people who made their names 20 years ago that by their whose names are no longer in my books but because they made a reputation you're depending on them to take you somewhere and you've forgotten me, the God who has been there for you who can take you somewhere. Sometimes you gotta get your eyes off a man and offer a pastor offer a pastor's wife offer somebody and put them back on the name of the living God somebody shout hallelujah 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes as churches we have also that thing and uh, I've seen people inviting me to several conferences and uh, uh, they think that uh, by Pastor David showing up because God anointed him their churches would increase. Uh, yes, the conference would fill up there but as soon as the man of God walks out also the people find their way to another place because people are depending on the man to build their church versus depending on God to build their church. Sometimes we depend on a man to build our legacy, to give us a name, uh, to take us somewhere. Mary said, how shall this be saying, I know not a man? Luke chapter 1 verse number 35 and 36. Then the angel Gabriel answered, the Holy Ghost, my God, he shall come upon thee and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Also that the holy thing which shall be born out of you shall be called the son of the living God. Some of you have children by other means. But this shall be called the son of God because it, he is the son of the Holy Ghost. Some of you, you have your job because of the connections you had. Because of the technical know-who and the technical know-hows. So you can call your job. No wonder we come to the house center of God and we give a testimony. Uh, God, bless, God never blessed you with this. Uh, some other man blessed you with that. You're all quiet. cannot preach this word hallelujah by the time the angel said now if you back up in verse number 34 uh, mary says uh, how shall this be saying i know not a man how shall this be saying i know not a man how shall this be saying i know not a man how shall this be? Saying I know not a man. Hmm. Let me pause for a minute. Allow that to sink in. How shall this be saying? I don't have connections. I don't have a good credit. I don't have a degree over my head. How shall this be seeing I'm new in the country of the United States of America? How shall this be seeing I have no papers? How shall this be seeing I know not a man? And sometimes we question the omnipotence of God Almighty. How shall this be seeing I know not a man? I remember a time I used to depend on the people that used to stand with me in the ministry until the Lord had to strike the shepherd and they all had to scatter and God had to teach me how to depend on God. Now this is a man who has been tried through a hell and a high water through the fire and the thicket that guess what? Though everybody lives, yet rivers of life will remain on its feet. Yeah, this is what it means that God has trained you. That you don't depend on any man but you depend depend on God. Guess what? Because after all, God spoke to you when there was nobody in that wilderness. He spoke to you. You by yourself. He never called a congregation and said, now this is Pastor David. I am calling him to start rivers of life assembly. No. When God spoke to you, you are there by yourself. Hallelujah. That you are there robbed yourself. That God, sometimes God shall teach you how to depend completely on God and nobody else. Hallelujah. God tells Abraham, leave your daddy, leave your mama, leave everybody you know. And guess what? Sometimes we have a tendency as we are living, we tend to live with some issues. The Bible says, the Lord went with Abraham. Lot went with Abraham and if you study the book of Genesis chapter number 13 as he went on the Bible says the land was not big enough to bear the two of them and the husband of Abraham began to strive with the husband of Lot some of you you're contending over destinies and you're contending over blessings and this and that because you carried something with you from your daddy's household you've got to shake that baggage off of you hallelujah 
when Jacob was living in the land of Haran, going back to the land of his fathers, the Bible says a retro carried her household idols with her. She hid them in a basket and Laban came pursuing them, but she was hiding a household idols. What did you carry with you from your daddy's household? Some of us carried anger with us. Some of us carried, we know how to speak for ourselves. Jesus has disciples and one of them is called Peter. Peter, every time there was something, Peter had to open up his mouth and say something. When they see uh, something looking like a ghost walking on top of the water, it was Peter who said first, Lord, if it be thou, I bid me to come unto thee. All the others were quiet. No wonder he began to sink. Hallelujah. Because he carried his sword with him when he was coming out of fishing. It's amazing how we see in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is about to die, but Peter still has a sword. I don't know if I'm speaking to a church here. A while back we spoke about the message, put your sword back in its sheath or in its place. Some of you, you carried your sword with you. That you know how to fight for yourself. And the Lord said, they that live by the sword shall die by the sword. If you keep on defending yourself everywhere you go, you never give me a chance as God to speak for you and to defend you. Sometimes you've got to learn how to quit quiet and hold your peace and let God speak on your behalf. But after they've talked you down and you felt the pain and you had to suck it in and you had to keep quiet and allow God to speak for you. If you keep on speaking for yourself, you never give God a chance to speak for you. And he will say unto you, let me let you fight this battle until you feel like you can't do it anymore. Then um, will I step in. I'm not going to come in as long as you're still God over your life. Until you let me be God over you. Until you let me be a provider over you. Because I am Jehovah Jireh. No wonder when Isaac asked Abraham, his father, uh, Daddy, where is the sacrifice? I see the wood. I see the knife. I see everything ready, but I never see the sacrifice. What did Abraham say? The Lord shall. My son Isaac, I have no idea. But one thing I know is God brought me over to this land. And the God who brought me from the house of my daddies is not about to forsake me in this desolate land of America. Others may be falling, but you're going to survive and you're going to thrive in America. Yeah, God is not a God who brought you from, from something to leave you to die in the wilderness. The reason he allowed the exodus is because there was a promised land called Canaan and it's going to bring you in to your promised land and there shall be no man able to stand before you all the days of your life I don't care if you bring the witches of the land, I don't care if the president passes a constitutional law, an executive order that we are going to evict everybody that we are going to deport everybody the Bible says unto me that all the, 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 the heavens and the earth belong unto God even these guys who call themselves America came Americans come from somewhere else Hallelujah. That is why they have Irish blood in them. They have Italian blood in them. They have Iraqi blood in their DNA. Hallelujah. Just like you have African blood in your DNA. They all come from somewhere. So if they can deport you, God can also just them out of the land. Who am I preaching to in this place? I said, who am I preaching to in this house? Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, my God, and there shall be no man able to stand before you, Joshua. As I was with my servant Moses, so am I going to be with you. Yeah, God has promised he's going to, leave, he's going to be with you, that he shall never leave you, nor forsake you. People may walk away from you, let them go. Who cares? As long as God is with you, God shall cause a whole nation to come back into your life. A man can leave you for now, but he doesn't know, he has no idea that maybe when he was stuck in your life, he was the one closing the doors for you. But as soon as he walked out, God began splitting every door open for you. That's why the Bible says, the book of Genesis 13, verse number 14. Now the Lord spoke unto Abraham after the Lord was separated from him. After Lot was gone, God said unto Abraham, 
after who was gone? Ah, some of the people you, you're trying to clean on to and uh, hold on to, hallelujah. They're actually a bunch of lots that can't take you nowhere. Yeah, because the name lot means blindness, that Abraham could not see his destiny because you're still depending on a man. You can see the power of God. You're still depending on somebody. You can see the greatness of God. You're still depending on the pastor. You can see the anointing of the living God work fully in your life. You're still depending on the little a hundred dollars your ex-boyfriend used to give you then the lord said unto abram after the lord was separate now lift up thine eyes and look god have mercy lift up your eyes and look after they are gone god is going to open up your eyes that you may see the blessing you've been praying for that you may see that oh god who am i prophesying to that you may see the fire you've been believing for the anointing you've been crying out to god for some people left you they thought they'll leave you for dead but they had no idea you're actually making room for god making room for to do what he can do best because as they were there. They were, they were being a stumbling block, resisting God from, no, from moving into your life. Thank God they walked away. Yes. Some of you have to call your exes and tell them, thank you for dumping me. Because you opened up a door for me to meet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah, I dare you to pick up the call and call him. I, I, I called just to thank you for leaving me. They thought, they thought you would pick up the phone to call him. Can I have another hundred dollars? But I'm calling you just to thank you for, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for leaving me. Yeah, yeah, because you gave me an opportunity to become a, a real jailhouse wrecker, to become a mighty man of God in the faith, uh, to become who I am. I never knew how to pray because I was depending on you. But when you left me, when you turned your back on me, you told me how to get on my knees and to depend on God. You told me how to shander. I am a warrior because you left me. Lord, I am a warrior because some people left me. I am the man of God I am because some people turn their backs on me. Had they not they turn their backs on me, I will be still behind, bound up in the, in the realms of rejection. Thank God they left you. Hallelujah. Thank God they shut that door in your face. Thank God they slammed that window in your face. Thank God they had to leave you. They thought they left you for dead, but they were making room for the big God, for the great God, for the one who owns all the heavens and they have to come and be your supplier. They were making room for God so God can do what he does best in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now the Lord spoke unto Abraham after the Lord was separated from him now abraham lift up your eyes because all along you are depending on lord abraham lift up your eyes elder katumba lift up your eyes because all along you are depending on somebody else pastor bella lift up your eyes because all along you are depending on oh you're quiet i said lift up your eyes and see what i can do see how big i am as god because all along they were blocking you from seeing me Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, preach with me. Tell somebody, neighbor, the people who left you were simply opening a door for you. No, 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 wrong neighbor. Raise up out of your seat and out of your seat. Tell five people, the people who left you were, were giving you a prophecy that God was about to meet with you. Yeah, tell somebody else, neighbor. Come on, tell them. Look at all this land. Now lift up thine eyes and look from the place where you are now. From the place you are. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. From the place that you are. The place you are means from your broke situation. The place you are means from your vehicle situation. 
The place you are means from your jobless situation. The place you are means from the situation you're in and you have no husband. From the place you are, lift up your eyes from Embera Jorimu, you must have so go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know. Because the Lord says, from the place that you are, lift up now your eyes and look northward, southward, look eastward and westward. All this was for you from the place that you are. Because the, actually, the Lord was keeping you in the place that you are. Lord was keeping you in the place that you're in. He was keeping you in stagnancy. He was keeping you in rejection. He was keeping you in that level of stoicism and no progress in your life. Some spiritual level, year after year, decade after decade, and you've been in America for such a long time. But because you still hold not to people, the Lord to give me this message. Now lift up your eyes from the place where you are. From from the place that you're in right now. From the same level you're in right now. There are people who have been abusing you lift up your eyes from the same situation and look northward and southward eastward and westward look at the greatness but Lord could not Abraham could not see that because he was depending on Lord he could not see the greatness of God in the west side because he was depending on Lord he could not see the greatness of God on the east side because he was depending on just a man Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, do me a favor. Preach with me. Tell somebody, neighbor, I fire every lot from your life. I fire every lot from your life. In the name of Jesus. Come on, tell him like you got some power in you. I fire every lot in your house, in your home, in your business, on your job, in your education, in your destiny. I fire every lot from your life. No wonder the reason they went separate ways was because there was a strife. Sometimes when strife happens between two people, God is trying to send them out of your life. The reason, the Bible says, and their herdsmen of, of, of Lot had strife with their herdsmen of Abraham. Because there was strife, it was actually a sign that now it is time to say goodbye. Hallelujah. Because you cannot work together unless. Hallelujah. How can I work with you if you're looking backward and I'm looking that way? How can I stand with you and uh, I'm trying to build but you're trying to break? Is that possible? The Lord said, he that is not with me is against me. He that does not gather with me does what? Scatters. So if you don't gather with me, then automatically you are scattering. And that and the two of us cannot work together unless we are agreed. And every time you see strife in people's lives, begin to ask, Lord, what is going on here? God, what is going on? Sometimes God is pointing you to a different direction altogether. That you are trying to hold it into a certain place, and uh, sometimes you, 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 you will you sometimes hinder yourself, and you will remain on the same level, not going anywhere because you know if Lot goes away and his hard men go away, how can I be with my lonely self? How can I be in this situation? Everybody needs somebody in America. Everybody needs somebody to call when you're down and uh, depressed and uh, you feel lost and oppressed and sometimes even possessed. You need somebody to call and uh, they encourage you. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter number 30 that David had 400 men, actually 600 men. The Bible says that all of them uh, picked up stones and they wanted to stone David to death. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 
he encouraged himself in the Lord. He's got to believe. That's 1 Samuel verse number. 1 Samuel 30. I believe verse number 6 or 7 somewhere. That David or verse number 8. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged. These guys picked up. They were working with David for such a long journey. But the day the, the, the Amalekites smote all of their lives, including David. Now they want to stone David. Sometimes the enemy attacks you and people want to kill you. Hallelujah. Now, now back up if you will. Back up if you will. B back up to uh, verse number. And David was greatly distressed. Thank you very much. Verse number six. For the people spoke of doing what? Stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David. Ay, 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 ay. My God. Sometimes you're in your home by yourself. Nobody calls you. You even wonder, does my cell phone still work? Really? Really? I, I, I thought I paid my, my cell phone bill last week. And uh, is the month really already over? Nobody has called. Does this phone really work? Do you really work? Hallelujah. You're in your house looking at the four walls of your bedroom all by yourself. Can nobody call you? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you're looking, where is the next picture going to come from? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Sometimes you wonder, where is my next car bill? Uh, how is it going to get paid? How is my, my, my mortgage going to get paid? Encourage yourself in the Lord. Now notice number one, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Verse number seven, verse number seven what did David do everybody? And David said unto Abathah the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee bring me hither, no, no, no. You, you, you didn't get the revelation. He said, bring me hither the ephod. And the bath brought thither the ephod unto David. Verse number 8. And David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue? That means when people think of stoning you, uh, just don't stop at encouraging yourself. Next thing you need to do is get back on your knees. Find a secret place where God can talk to you. Sometimes you need to hear the voice of God afresh. Sometimes you need to hear divine direction again. Sometimes like you're facing a wall. Yes, God spoke to you, move forward. But you find a resistance, maybe a wall of Jericho standing right there. Lord, how am I going past this wall of Jericho? Because the strategy now may be simply give me a praise. But according to David, God was like, pass Overtake and recover. Sometimes you've got to, to inquire at the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes God shall speak unto Moses. Speak unto the rock. And last week he said, smite the rock. But you think he's going to speak the same way he spoke last year. Sometimes you thought you think he's going to use the same man to give you a thousand dollars like he used two years ago. And you have no idea the brook carries dry it up. And now you have to listen to God again. So you can go to Zarephath because there's a widow woman waiting for you. Hallelujah. But you're still depending on the old ways of yesterday. You're still depending on uh, somebody who, maybe who had a shoulder uh, uh, to lean on, maybe three years ago. This season in your life was over. Sometimes you've got to inquire at the Lord. Yes, maybe last year or two years ago, you used the other man, used the other woman. Lord, who? Uh, how are you going to come through? The Bible says the ways of God are unsearchable. You cannot discern his ways. Sometimes it comes from the east when you expect him to come from the west. The Israelites, the reason up to this day, they still don't believe their Messiah came was because they never believed a, a, a king of kings could be born in a manger. In a place where cows sleep and do whatever they have to do. They thought he would be arrayed in royal apparel. Sometimes your blessing won't come advertising itself that I am your blessing. Sometimes your blessing could come as somebody who is in need. But if you can accommodate them for just one month, for the next rest of your life, they could be the blessing God was sending you away. Hallelujah. Because if the widow woman had sent Elijah away, for three years and a half, people died, but she survived. Because the man of God came when he was in need. 
some people come to you when they are in need. Sometimes capture the revelation. Lord, why did you allow Louisa to come into my life? I know she ain't got nothing right now, but Lord, why did you allow her? And God can open up your eyes and see. And you can see her unleashing monies, dollars and pounds and your quiet hallelujah in a space of two years. But when you look at her right now, you feel like, I am so tired of this woman. She needs to get out of my life. But if you can just, sometimes, oh, hold on, just a little longer. Lord, sometimes some of you have fired your blessing, never knowing it was actually your blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to in this place? Who am I speaking to in this place? There are territories to regain. That means at one time we possessed this land, but then this land, guess what? We lost the land somehow, somewhere. Remember, the Lord said unto Abraham, after Lot was gone, now lift up your eyes and look southward and northward, westward and eastward. The place, from the place that you're in right now, as, as far as the eye can see, I'm going to give it unto you. And Abraham entered that land. When you come to Genesis, I believe chapter 16 or chapter 15, verse number 16 then Abraham sees again in a vision and he sees a bird coming in and uh, and fowls of the air they're coming in and uh, of course was in a great sleep and they were eating the thing that uh, he had put upon the altar the Bible says then the Lord spoke unto Abraham uh, that I'm going to send your descendants into a land they know not and they shall serve a foreign king but after 400 years I'm going to bring them out and I shall punish that nation which which would have subdued the people yeah now this land there were there were once in that land some of you there is a glory you once had maybe your daddy had it some of you there is a generational blessing you're supposed to be walking in that's why the bible says the blessing of abraham isaac and jacob and the bible says galatians 3 verse number 29 that if you be of the seed of abraham then you are heirs and joined heirs with the promises of god Hallelujah. So if you be a seed of Abraham, if you be Christ's, hallelujah. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs? You are, we are heirs. So that means the blessing was already given. But the devil divided the blessing. God wants you to regain that which you lost. There were financial territories. There were spiritual territories. There are geographical territories. There are territories of influence. The radio is a territory, the airwaves, the media. Hallelujah. May God give you access to the TV stations of America in the name of Jesus. That you shall have influence and you shall own territories over the airwaves. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, let me break it down for us to understand this. There are territories everybody has got to regain. There are academic territories. There are geographical territories. For example, Joshua, chapter 6, verse number 1. The Lord says unto Joshua, because Jericho was securely shut up, nobody went out, nobody went in. But this was the geographical territory that God was giving unto Joshua. Joshua had to own the territory. There are some blessings, some territories the devil has locked you out of. Uh, some of you, the devil has locked you out of your marriage, Madrin. That you gotta march around the city seven, six days, and under the seventh day, you gotta do something, hallelujah, for you to regain yeah, the blessing God gave you. Uh, there is a woman of God, Mr. Katumba's wife, who said uh, a, a few years ago, there is a woman who was in prayer, and she went to pray. Uh, was it for 24 hours? For praying for just one thing. She was praying for her husband. She prayed for nothing else. She never prayed for money. Never prayed for influence. She just prayed for her husband. 24 hours non-stop. Wake up. Sometimes you pray and you sleep and uh, you wake up again. Stick on the, th on the same thing. Be focused. Because God is training you to be snipers in the spirit. Stop shooting everywhere. You see every brother in the church, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. No, focus on that one. Shanda Ragadia Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
be a sniper. A sniper eyes at one thing like that. And they got their, 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 their gun uh, aimed at the, at the target right on the forehead. If a sniper means to shoot your finger, they'll shoot your finger off. Even if you're a mile away. If they mean to shoot one hair off your head, they will shoot one hair off your head. That's how trained they are. God is training you to be spiritual snipers. That's why the Bible called the soldiers of Jesus Christ. We're soldiers of the cross. So you can pray on point. If you're praying for something, focus on that. Hallelujah. If you're marching around Jericho, why claim Jericho? And you're claiming the other city. And you're claiming that one. No wonder by the end of the year, you have no breakthrough. But if you focus on one thing, Lord, the next 21 days, I'm praying for this one specific thing. And if you deal with that, season after season after season, by the end of the year, my God, you would have the whole promised land. That's why they never walked attacking Jericho and other people are attacking Ai and others are going to another city. They all focused one place until it was conquered. Then they went to another. Until it was conquered. Then they went to another. Until it was conquered. Hallelujah. But the church, we keep on shooting that way, shooting that way, shooting that way until you don't even know what you're shooting at. Huh? What is shooting at that you even lost your eyesight but you're still firing? Really? Hallelujah. Tell somebody, focus your prayer life again. Come on, tell somebody, focus your prayer life again. Focus your guns again. Tell somebody, focus your eyes, your guns again. Aim your guns once again. <laughs> Aim your guns once again. There are territories to regain. Some territories we've lost. Some people have left the church. Those are territories that we've got to regain. How are you going to regain them? Focus. Hallelujah. If you say, now we're going to pray for everybody who has, whom the devil has divided from the church. Trust me, by the end of the 40 days, you begin seeing them coming back one by one by one. And as they're coming back, they shall bring 10 members along with them. You didn't get what I said. Yeah, if you begin to pray for your money that you lost, you begin to see God causing nations to supply for you. You begin to see the increase of God coming into your life one by one by one. Until you're fully restored. This is what happens. Jehovah 2.25 And I shall restore unto you all the years. All the years. Some of you have lost years. Think about the man who wasted your years. Huh? Think about the man who wasted your years. When God restored Ruth, my God, Ruth was like a newborn woman. May God restore you. May God restore. If you read theology and you see uh, the chronicles of Esther, Esther was actually about 80 years of age when she was getting married to Ahasuerus. A grandma, she won the beauty contest. A judge won the, ah, won the models who are 19 and 20 could not win it. But because she had favor, she knew how to focus. When she went in, she didn't take in anything she wanted. She told to, she spoke unto Higayai, who was the king's chamberlain in, in charge of the king's women. And she said unto him, please tell me whatever you tell me that shall I take. Because Higayai knew what the king wanted. Did you get what I said? Higayai knew what the king wanted. Higayai was in charge of all the women. He was a custodian of all these, these, these single uh, virgins who were in the land. And everybody took what they wanted. Except when Esther's turn came, she said unto Higayai, Come, whisper in my ears, what does the king want? Sometimes you need your Higayai to speak to you. Sometimes you need a spiritual father to usher you into your next level. Hallelujah. Don't despise your covering over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a reason Pastor David is Pastor David. Hallelujah. There is a reason he is Pastor David. He wasn't born yesterday. He didn't start ministry yesterday. He's not a novice in the things of God. There are journeys just traveled in the spirit that you've never been there, but he knows where you can go. He knows some, some that he knows that if you pass there, a serpent will bite you because he's been there. He knows that if you go that way, a lion will kill you. That's why pastors are there for us. 
and they shall tell you, now don't do this, my daughter. Don't do this, my son, but do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Think about a grandma 80 years of age beating all of you up in here to win the beauty contest. Pastor Bella knows how, how to preach it better. She says her boobs were like socks. They are falling flat. But she won the beauty contest. God, how can somebody like that win the beauty contest? Woo! God of mercy. May God give you that kind of favor. That you know what to take. Hallelujah. Just like Boaz. He was a mighty man of wealth. Many women began to parade themselves before, before, before Boaz. But they had no idea. This man is not looking for a woman. He's looking for a wife. A wife can build a home. Uh, that's why Ruth went to position herself in the vineyard, which was near uh, Boaz. She began to dig. As they were putting on makeup, the others, she was digging. Because a wife, you just don't stay in the mirror putting on makeup all day long, going to shop all day long. You have like 15 credit cards, amen, and all of them are all maxed out. You're all quiet. Hallelujah. Yeah, you, you, oh God, I wish I could preach it. And uh, you buy one dress, which is a, oh God, my God. Ah, I don't want to get killed today. Uh, I don't want to get killed today. Who cares anyway? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You find somebody, they go to a shopping mall. They buy a $300 dress, which is actually a shouting color. They are going to wear it just one day, and everybody would mark that dress. When you put it on again tomorrow, everybody would know you wore that last week. Sometimes you've got to learn how to blend in, amen. Who knows I wore this suit a month ago? Nobody knows, amen. But sometimes you just going to have to do that, hallelujah. And I didn't spend a whole lot, lot of money on it. You're quiet, amen. You're quiet, hallelujah. So, so if I come this day, maybe dressed in yellow shoes, when I come back tomorrow, everybody would know that's a yellow shoe Pastor David wore the other week. But now I got the same black shoe I had on three weeks ago and none of you has the... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, sometimes we spend a whole day beautifying the outside instead of taking care of the inside. If you take care of the inside, you shall talk to a man and he shall be like, my God, nobody has ever spoken to me that way. Uh, the other ones are beautiful on the outside, but when they open up their mouth, they have a stinking sour coming out of their mouth. They are so abusive and so uh, demeaning. Hallelujah. That's why in Luganda they say, Funda no mubi. Angundera. Funda no mubi. Hey, thank you. Because you may take a beautiful diamond and she, it, it has diamonds and gold and silver and sapphires and all of that. You decorate it in your home, but tomorrow, my God. Shando rogo debaya. Tomorrow you may have to sleep on the outside, praying in tongues. God deliver me, Lord. What did I get myself into? Funda no mubi. Yeah, that's what Ruth did. Ruth went outside into the vineyard. She began to dig. She got her hands dirty because Mo Boaz was looking for a wife. He was not looking for a beautiful woman. Hallelujah. Because Boaz was a mighty man of wealth. That's in your Bibles, by the way. Boaz's mother was, was Rahab. Think about Rahab, the hallowed, the prostitute, raised up a mighty, a mighty man of wealth. That everybody in the land, every woman in the land was contesting to take Boaz. And they paraded themselves looking all beautiful. But Ruth, a Moabitess, number one. Just like you, you're immigrants from Africa. She was a Moabitess from another land. And she came into Israel just like you came to America. She had issues just like we all have issues. She had previous relationships just like all of y'all have previous relationships. Though you're looking all holy and all righteous and spirit-filled and uh, the cousins of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You guys are so holy and men holier than thou. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell that a holy sanctified person next to you now. This word is for me, not for you. 
Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. Yeah, and the Bible says uh, Mo Boaz was a mighty man of wealth. Look at how he leaves all the beautiful Israelite women and he goes for a foreigner. God is going to bring somebody who is going to surprise you in your life. Not just for a husband, not just for money, but for everything. Because when God does something, Ephesians, 2, Ephesians 3 verse number 20, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you may ask, according to the power that worketh in you. Hallelujah. As long as I got faith in me, I'm going to believe the name of the living God. Let me get dirty for now. Yeah, but, but, but one week from now, I'll be all arrayed in beauty apparel. And you will wonder, where did this come from? Because because I labored. I labored for it. Tell somebody I'm going there. I'm regaining my territory. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta regain your territory. There are territories as a church we've got to regain. There are territories in your finances you've got to regain. Maybe the devil has stolen some finances from you, some resources from you, some connections from you. God says, I'm going to restore everything that you have lost. And can't no man be able to stand before you? Because when God sets you on a journey, God will be the one leading the way. That's why even the witches cannot stand in your pathway. Even if you hire Balak, the prince of all the witches, if you, even if you hire Balaam, the master witch, he cannot bewitch the people because they are blessed. Hallelujah. As Balaam was trying to curse the Israelites, the Lord says, shall you curse whom the Lord has blessed? My God. Tell somebody I'm blessed beyond the curse. I am blessed beyond the curse. I am blessed beyond measure. Think about being blessed that when witches call your name out in a shrine, God descends down in a shrine. And God talks to them, you cannot curse Louisa. She's blessed. She's anointed. She's a woman of God. She spends the whole night in my praises. How can you curse somebody whom I have blessed? For there is no divination. There is no enchantment. There is no sorcery. There is no witchcraft against Jacob, which shall prosper from this day on. Because the Lord is with him. For the Lord has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody said, I am regaining my territory. I am regaining my territory. I take back everything the devil took from me. I take back my money. I take back my wealth. Come on, get up out of your seat. Get up out of your seat. Come on, somebody. Begin to regain. Begin to regain your territory. Begin to regain what you lost. Begin to regain your favor. Begin to regain your influence. Begin to regain your name. Yeah, may God give you back your name. May God give you back everything that you have lost. May God give you back your favor. May God give you a Shabbat